What's up YouTube? Welcome to the first video in the rendering series that we'll be doing, rendering the uh, the house that we're doing here in Eastbourne. Now when it comes to uh, rendering, one of the most important parts about the whole process is the preparation. Not only the suction control, but also to set your beads out properly. Now it is personal preference as to whether you do the render gripping or slurry coating before the beading, or you do the beading first. Generally, we prefer to do the beading. The reason being is it gives uh, a parameter in which to put the render grip or the slurry coat. Also enables you just to uh, put a bit of uh, render grip onto the beads as well, which just helps with the uh, adhesion. The adhesion. So what we're gonna be featuring in this video is how you set out the beads, how you cut the beads. Now, the beads that we pretty much always use without exception are uh, plastic beads. Now these ones here, they're 15 mil beads. Uh, generally that is our preference. Certainly if um, you've hacked off, um, 15 mil tends to be for us about right for sand cement. You can go up to 20. I probably wouldn't go above that. You're just putting on an exuberant amount of product and it makes it very difficult to not um, have waves in the wall. So 15 mil for us, that's our go-to. Why plastic? Well, to be perfectly honest with you, although for some bizarre reason, there are so many renderers, uh, there are incredible renderers online, uh, on Instagram that you see, and they seem to always be using um, galvanized uh, rendering beads. I have no idea uh, why they are doing this because they're superb renderers. In Eastbourne, on the coast, you cannot use metal beads. The reality is if you live anywhere near the coast, you are going to get rusting. It is inevitable, it will happen. As such, plastic beads is pretty much the only guaranteed way of making sure that you do not get rust, unless you're gonna use stainless steel beads, which are about four or five times the cost of plastic. So it's a no brainer. We always use plastic, we have done for years. There is no reason why we'd switch back over to metal, to be honest with you. So, my honest and professional opinion, stick with the plastic. It's a much better bead. Um, generally, if you buy them from merchants online, you'll get a much better deal. Even if you go on eBay, you can buy packs of 25 and what have you for a fraction of the cost you would at uh, your local merchants. But anyway, so we're using 15 mil white plastic beads <clears throat> and we're gonna start on the window. So the uh, we usually start with the head and to cut them we just generally we just use tin snips um, it works well so to get the size it's very much similar to uh, a skimming bead just offer it up on one side and then you have to remember that it's a 15 mil bead so it, you want to cut it in about 20 mil short of the other side of the reveal so just do as it goes crashing on the floor. Um, nothing more complicated than that. And then if you just trim out the wings just a little bit, um, when you're pushing it into the window, it just makes life an awful lot easier. Now, generally they're gonna be probably plenty of plasterers that say um, you need to level this up, blah, 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 blah. That is not incorrect. However, in an ideal world on a new build, you would 100% want to level these up. The downside is if the windows are not level and then you level the beads up, it will show. So we always match the bead to the window, never the other way around. It will show up if you if you put those beads in level and the window is wonky, it will look terrible. So as such, you will see I'm fitting the beads without a level and it is just purely because I am matching it to the window, not to what is actually true. Um, fingers crossed these are actually level, but I'm not gonna worry too much about it. Now, when it comes to fixing the beads, there are several ways of doing it. You can go for traditional screw and plug which is lovely, takes a bit of time, it's fine. Generally, we use that method when we're doing bell cast or stop beads, or you can bed it in with the gear itself, so the sand and cement. 
That's fine, we don't really like doing that though because it makes the bead very, very fragile. If you knock it, it falls out. It's a right pain in the neck. There is another way which I've seen and it is online and there was a, a YouTuber who featured this a couple of years ago. He isn't a plasterer to his credit and he recommended using dab adhesive. Do not do this. We tried it for a season because it sounded like it had merit. We had several of them fail. Now probably for some of the professional plasterers watching, they're thinking, Alex, that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Why in the world would you consider that? At the end of the day, I thought I'd try it. It worked, but the render failed the following year when the adhesive, the dab adhesive got wet. So if you stumble across this video where someone says use dab adhesive to fix the beads, do not do it. <laughs> Learn from my mistake because I had to redo several jobs. It's a pain in the neck. So there is one other way which we um, have used and it is brilliant. And that is to use this product here, my handy assistant behind the camera, Louis, Pink Grip. This is by far and away the best way to fix beads. It's the fastest way, it's the most secure way. There's loads of professionals that recommended this. We tried it out, it is superb. Use Pink Grip. <clears throat> so, when it comes to fitting the bead itself, um, I just wanna make sure, scraper. So these windows have been newly fitted and they've been foamed in. So just run the scraper in the top. Like so. And then all you're gonna do, have quite a wide hole on the render grip, on the pink grip, and then just do a nice, generous amount of render grip, uh, pink grip, sorry. Like so. Okay. Now if I was to show you now, so you can see, a nice, generous amount of pink grip. Now what we are gonna do is smash the joint up. What we're gonna do is match the bead to the window. This is obviously a lot harder. With one hand. Thank you, thank you. And then what we'll do is we'll make sure that this line here marries up with this line here. So that when it's all rendered in, the lines are parallel with the window. Uh, there is, as I've already mentioned, there is nothing worse than when you level up the window, or uh, level up the bead, and the window isn't level, and you get this cheese wedge effect. It looks terrible. We've done it before, and we have never had a homeowner that's come back to us and said, I'm glad you did that. No, they want it to look right, not necessarily be right. So for those that feel I should be using a level, I don't care. So when it then comes to doing the sides of the windows, we've now got our head in place. We know it's about in the right place. Uh, all we're gonna do now is we're just gonna off the bead up to the window sill like so. And then we're just going to snip it where the two points meet. Just do a tiny little mark. Now that's coming up on the camera, just there. And just do a very faint back cut. Just so we know that when we offer those two beads up, they will then match. Now, I don't know how well it is visible here, but you can see there's an ever so slight the sill here sticking out. That's gonna cause a problem. So all we're gonna do is we're just gonna cut that out. Cut that out on the bead. One, two, because we just want to make sure that it fits. And then we're just gonna have a little offer up. Looks like it's about right. And then what we'll do again, same as before. Handy assistant Louie, he knows what he's doing. We're just gonna scrape out like so. Foam. And then we're going to use the pink grip. 
Now what we're going to try and do is we're going to match the window, so we're going to get the bead to push against the window best we can. So nice generous dobs. And we're going to do is run bead up against the window. Now, like so. Now, what we're going to do is we're just going to make sure that this line here runs parallel. So we'll adjust it to make sure that's right. I'll probably do that off camera. It takes a bit of uh, fiddling around. But there is one thing which is important to do. Now, when it comes to the reveal, you want the reveal to be the same all the way up. That really looks terrible if you don't do that. So, the easiest way to do that is if you look, there's holes in this, so just make sure the holes match up right. So you wanna go as tight as you can to the wall to push it in nice and tight. And then just make sure those holes marry up. It's actually pretty close, to be honest with you. Okay, so the last thing to do when it comes to these windows, so if we stand back, so you can have a look. You can see the windows, they are in line, the beads are in line with the windows, that's what we want. Now what you'll then see, so um, we'll snip these bits off after the fact, uh, a bit later on, we'll uh, line those up. Now what, the last thing you wanna do when it comes to all your beading, it's the same with any of your plastic beading. What you want to do is get some mitre fix and then just dab the corner there. Just a little dab. Line that up. Like so, very carefully. And then what you're going to do, just give that a little spray. And then we wait five, 10 seconds, something like that. And that then fuses these two together. So these are now stuck together. So what that then subsequently means is that all of your corners, so where the two bead beads meet, they're always nice and tight. Um, it makes such a big difference when it comes to when you've rendered and, and it's all painted up, all the points, all the corners are really nice and tight together. If you don't do that, it's so easy to knock the bead and then one of the corners just, just lifts up and goes out of place and it just, it looks rubbish. It's very, very difficult to get rid of. So I'll do the same uh, with the other side. That one will need a little bit more jiggery pokery. So um, I'll actually do that off camera. But with um, any point where two beads meet, just do a tiny little dab of Mitafix um, just to lock it in place and it will just guarantee a much crisper finish at the end of the job So this window here is now finished. The only thing really left to do Is just use a, an off-cut plastic and just where you've got a, a spludge out of pink grip Just get a little wipe off it's Not a big deal, but it just Makes life a little bit easier later on. So when it's still while it's still malleable just Flan off a little bit, like so. There we go. So you can now see the beads, the corners are nice and tight. Now what we will do is once this pink grips come off, we'll just snip that off, um, just so you don't see that, those tiny little bits there. But other than that, for doing, this, this is exactly the same principle for doing uh, doorways and windows. It's the same process. Now if you were running, a bell cast, it's very important. What you want to do is you want to run the bell cast first. Now, bell cast is the bead uh, that goes on the bottom of the wall. Now, the way a bell cast works is you run uh, it all the way along the wall, so on the bottom of the wall. Now, we've got a kicker brick here, so we're not going to do it, but it runs all the way along, all the way around. If your job has one of those, you want to put those on first, and then you want to sink the uh, corner bead on top of it. That's how they're designed to have a, a 45 degree back cut and for the corner bead to sit in line with the bell cast. So if you're running bell casts, they go on first. Um, as we mentioned, 
possibly in the intro video I think we're not putting bell casts on this because the wall is the walls are so wavy um, what would happen is the bell cast would actually follow the line of the wall it would be really difficult to straighten out so it would be a lot easier for us to get it flat and straight if we don't run the bell cast so we're not going to we're just going to go straight on the kicker Okay, so when it comes to doing bell casts here, you can see we've got the lead flashing here. Now, uh, typically bell casts, they tend to come in around about 2.5 meters or three meters long. Um, this span here is longer than any of the bell casts that we actually have. So actually, as such, we're gonna have to join them. Now, the important thing when it comes to doing a bell cast over lead flashing is that it really needs to be as straight as you possibly can. And when it comes to joining two beads together, uh, sometimes where they join, it doesn't sit very straight. So uh, it's an awful lot easier to join them together before you fix them onto the house. Now, the easiest way to do that, <clears throat> so this is the section, just wait for the vehicle to go past. So this is the section that we've got to add on to a full length. Now, what we're going to do is we're just going to use uh, a bit of the uh, wing of one of the beads and then we are just going to do half, one half of it and then give it a spray. So, hold that down for a few seconds. Now what we're going to do is we are going to turn her over and then do the other half. And now, you've got full length bead that spans the entire roof and yet it's still running in a perfectly straight line. It makes it an awful lot easier to um, fix the bell cast on the lead flashing and keep it in a nice straight line without having any waves in it. So top tip, uh, join the beads together first, just using uh, a bit of the wing of the bead just to, to mold them together using the mitre fix. Okay, so when it comes to actually uh, installing the um, bell cast to the lead flashing there are quite a few ways you can do it you can either use um, like tack nails into the plug joint uh, or you could screw and plug which uh, to be honest is probably the best way uh, or if you're feeling lazy like I am right now because I can't be bothered to go and get the screws and plugs um, I'm just going to go with uh, pink grip um, and what we're going to do is just sludge it um, pretty much where the lead goes into the brickwork Nice generous amount. Like so. You really want the um, pink grip to stand up so you've got decent lumps because that's what's going to hold it. Okay, so when it comes to doing um, the actual fit of the bead, uh, where the bell cast, uh, where the lead is here. You want the bell cast to run about a hundred or so mil past uh, the um, past the lead. Now this is again, this is a 15 mil. Um, this is a 15 mil bead. What we're not going to do is we're not going to do that um, that swooped kind of almost like teardrop effect. We're not going to be doing that. What we'll actually do is everything's going to run in line. So the bell cast and the beads, they'll all run in line. So it's straight. But what we will do is we'll just run it past the lead and then we'll bring the render underneath the bell cast and run it up to the lead like that. So when it's finished, it all looks nice and neat and square. So uh, what Louis is gonna try and do is give me a hand putting this on. What we'll do is we'll move the camera. So if you wanna do the end up, I'll do the majority of it like this. So what we're going to do is do about 100 mil overhang and then what we're going to do is we're just going to initially to get the line about right we're going to just try and marry the top of the bead up with what looks right with the top of this brick core. So go back to you. A bit more, a bit more, about there. Okay and then come halfway down. See, about there. Now because we've put so much pink grip on, as the pink grip oozes through, 
it should hold the bead in place. Like so. Right there. Nice. Okay. Now, very important. Very important when it comes to doing these um, these beads along here. Now, typically, because the lead has been beaten into the roof, the lead doesn't particularly run straight. So the, all you have to do is, once you've stuck it in place, so just as a rough guide, run the bead roughly with what looks right with the top of the brick. And then what you want to do is you want to get off the scaffold, go stand back, and then just have a look and just see that it looks straight. Um, just so where the bead and the lead, where the lead starts to curve around, that that looks looks even. So we'll, we'll do that now just to make sure that uh, it looks all right from a distance. Okay, so what we're gonna do now, we've just fitted the um, bell cast onto the lead and then what we're gonna do is just gonna walk away from the house. So obviously it's a lot harder for you to see on the camera, but you can see that it looks straight to the lead. Uh, what's more also, when we uh, fitted the, when we just fitted it, I just had a little look down the side, the, um, the side of it while I was on the scaffold and just sighted it down its length just to make sure that it looks straight. I'll go back up the scaffold so you can uh, see that yourself. Again, because there's not really any true reference point when it comes to marrying up against the lead, running it perfectly level would be a pretty pointless. So just running your eye down it like that, just making sure that it sits straight. I'm quite sure, not 100% sure how well it comes out. This uh, GoPro's got an ultra wide lens on it, so uh, it might ever so slightly be curving it. Um, but looking down the side of it, it does run straight and from a distance. Uh, it also looks straight in line with the roof and the lead. So as far as we're concerned, that is good enough. You can see as well, being generous with the pink grip, it oozes out and then as it dries, that will hold that in place. So we will leave that in there for a while just to go off a bit. But just a simple way of fitting the um, fitting the bell cast over the lead flashing without it taking you too long. Okay, so the next section of beads that we are going to review are these ones here that are going around the uh, bay window here. Now, um, because the bay window, it doesn't have the kicker, what we're gonna do is we're gonna run the bell cast um, in line with where that kicker was, run that all the way around, um, and then we are going to bead this 45 as well. Uh, you could freehand uh, these 45s, uh, but we're not going to. Two reasons. One, um, it's quite a lot more work, it tends to look better if you bead it, and I'm a little bit lazy, to be perfectly honest with you. It's just easier going to beads. So. The first thing we need to do is run the bottom bell cast first, so we're going to do that now. Okay, so when it comes to doing the uh, bottom bell cast first, what we are going to do is we're going to do it in three sections. Um, on internal, so if the 45s were going the other way, you can actually snip the back of the bead out and, and bend it around, but we're not going to um, just because it takes a bit more work. But what we're going to try and do is run the bead in line with the top of this brick here, uh, which is where the render on the main part of the house is gonna finish. So what we're gonna do is just cut it a little bit long, like so, and then just do a slight cut back, like so. All right. <coughs> Same here, cut the other one. Slight angle cut. And this, we'll just use this just to get a rough idea on its length. Okay. Looks about right. So again, nice generous amount of pink grip because the pink grip itself 
is what's going to hold it up. One, two, like that. I'm going to make sure that when you're doing the bell casts, the pink grip doesn't come out the bottom there because um, it doesn't look particularly great. Um, and just because we've got quite a bit of time, we've got about five, ten minutes on the bell cast um, with the pink grip, so we're just going to just loosely put it in position, roughly run the bead in line with the top of the brick, just to give us a rough idea of where it should be. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do the other side, um, and then we will uh, come back and join up the middle. Okay, so what we're going to do now is, uh, Lou and myself, we are, we've cut this to length and we've put the pink grip on. Both sides are done. Now what we're going to do is we're just going to offer this up. Lou's going to line his up. Then I will line mine up as well. Just push that in. Obviously, much harder with one hand. <clears throat> okay, like so. Just check Louis. Louis is pretty good as well. Right, and then that one's missed. That's fine. Come over it. And then uh, if Louis gets the Myvix. And then remember what we said, uh, whenever two beads meet, you want to mitre fix it. So we will do that now. So where the 45s are here, a little bit of glue, spray, and then just pinch those together like so. And then hold it for about five, 10 seconds. Let it go, and you can, you can see there, it's pinched it right in. And then, same again over here. <clears throat> Bit of mite fix. Pinch those together. It's pretty much almost gone off straight away. Right, now that's done. What we're then gonna do for the 45, as you can see, this is our, our line here. And then what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna use one of the bell casts to create the line that we want. So what we're gonna do, aggressive cutback. Quite aggressive cutback. And then if we do a rough cut, so roughly around there, And just a bit of pug on there. Great use of slips there. That's why none of our slips last very long. And then we're just going to snip that back, like so. And then again, another aggressive cut back. Okay, and then what we're looking to do is we want to try and line up the beads like so. Slip those back like so. So we're then going to that and then we will glue those in. So, one, two, three. If you pass me the level, Lou. Mm -hmm. Okay. We will, this one, we will check this one for plumb because we are going over the top of the brickwork, we create the uh, plumb line. So we will check to make sure that is plumb. Helps if the uh, level isn't covered in junk. And it's about there. Okay. Let me check it that side. Pretty good. Okay, and then. Same as we've said the whole way through, whenever a bead touches another one, 
glue it in place. Really, when you get the three together, like so, and that's when uh, that's when it really makes a big difference. So when this is all rendered in these points will all be nice and tight. <clears throat> so you can now see, so we're obviously gonna render all the way down here to the kicker. And then as soon as it hits the uh, bay window, obviously it'll hit the uh, bell cast and they'll have a nice sharp uh, 45 degree line and then we'll just carry on. So we'll just do another one of those on that side. Um, but that is it. That, um for doing bay windows and 45 degree angles, um, it's an awful lot easier just to use the bell cast to create those straight lines. Um, but you just remember to do that bottom bell cast first. So um, what we're going to do is just finish off those, the one on the other side, clean up the uh, pink grip blobs, and that will be about it. Okay, so the last uh, bead that we are going to discuss in how to fit is the long bead that goes up the side uh, of the corner of the house. Now, uh, just purely for time, what I've done is I've just fixed the top one there that is in place. Um, all it's been done is, is pink ripped in. Now again, for those that might be wondering, did we level it? No, we did not. Why? Well, let's say for instance, uh, this wall, let, let's say the corner was out by say two inches top to bottom. I'm not gonna pull the bead out two inches at the top and try and pack that out. I would probably end up using something like three tons of sand to try and fill that out. So on a domestic job, certainly on a hack off, where the old render's been taken off and we're redoing it, you just go to what uh, is already there. The important thing, is very, very important, is that the bead runs straight not that it runs level. So in this case here, what we've done is generous blobs of pink grip, pushed the bead in gently, and then pushed it flat with a long level, just to make sure there are no waves in the bead. Now what you'll see here is that it's going from the uh, soffit, and it's coming to about here, and we just need to join it from there to there. Now, um, in reality, probably should I have done it the other way around? Yeah, that is that is right, and probably for those that have noticed that, that is accurate. The reason being is that will be at your eye level, but I am pretty confident that I can join these beads in a way that you're never gonna see it. So, uh, but in reality, that is right. Really, you should do it away from the eye level. But what we're gonna do, is smack Louie in the head. Yep. Sorry about that, Louie. <laughs> is we're just gonna do a back cut on the side that's gonna sit on the brick kicker at the bottom. So just gonna back cut that away. And the reason being is so that then touches the brick, that first point. And then what we're gonna do is put that onto the brick, offer it up to the other bead, and then just do a light mark, like so. So there's an ever so slight mark there. And again, we're gonna do it a very slight back cut, not a lot. You don't want much. There is a good reason why you don't want much, because if you do too much, basically you cut all of the bead out and then the render has nothing to sit in and when you're doing the scratch coat, it just keeps falling out. So, what we're then gonna do is, same as before, we will Nice, generous blobs of pink grip. Just as a, a side note, um, when doing an entire house worth, you will probably use an entire box of this, and, and like a box of 12, so don't be stingy. Um, just buy the bulk box, I think it's about 30 pound you know, it is better to have too much of this than not enough. Um, so every house render we do, we buy a new box of 12 and we use most of them. So same again, bead onto the bottom. And then it's the, this one here that I need to marry up. So just carefully splodge it in. And then I will use the long level
and then just push the rest of it in with the long level. And using the long level instead of your hand should limit or reduce any waves that you might get. And then the last thing to do, as mentioned, exactly the same with the windows where two beads meet, use my fix. So I'm gonna offer it up. So Now if I was to show you it now, now don't panic here, so this is it now, don't panic here, I don't know how well you can see if there's an ever so slight blob of glue. Now you have to remember with sand and cement that you are hand floating, or in our case we'll use a power float, that will act like sandpaper, so the float goes over the top of the bead, any kind of blobs of glue, that will get knocked straight off, so do not panic about that. But you can see here, you can see straight away, if you put too much of a back cut off on here, there would literally be a huge great hole here, it's big enough for it as it is already. But if I was to cut that back at 45 degrees, you'd have a massive great hole here, um, which it just makes it harder for the scratch coat to stay in. So, that there, that there is done. They say I, I'm pretty darn confident in my ability to join those beads, so I don't think you'll notice it, but uh, just as a, for, for reference, if you weren't doing this for a video, so it was um, easy for you to see, really you'd want to put the, the join at the top, just so it wasn't visible. Um, but for the sake of the video, we've done it the other way around. So that really is it for this video. Now, Louis and I, we're gonna just go and crash around and just fit all of the beads now um, on on this house but that is the basic principle uh, when it comes to installing these beads as mentioned already if you're using a bell cast or a stop bead on the bottom as a perimeter bead that goes on first the way we do it is we always run the bead in line with the pug course or in line with the brick um, again same principle if you were to run that with a level it would look a bit weird if the brick started cheese wedging. There is always a fine balance, obviously, um, because if the bricks are wavy, you obviously can't do that. You need to run the bead straight, but as close to what the bricks are doing as possible. But run the bell cast or stop bead first, and then your corner beads come down and sit on top of them. And where those beads meet, you want to use mitre fix, especially like on the bottom of a corner there. If you had two bell casts coming together, and then a bead coming down on the top, where all three beads meet, you'd wanna just do a dab of mitre fix, and that would lock all of those in place. Um, as mentioned as well, the only other thing to remember is, in our opinion, certainly for domestic work, you always want to run the beads to what the, it looks right for the window, not necessarily what is level, because if the windows are at a level, it will show if you then level up the beads so always what looks right not what is necessarily right we hope you've enjoyed the first installment on how to render a house remember that the preparation work is without a doubt the most important part of the job if you do that right everything else that follows will be so much easier so we thank you so much for watching if you enjoy the content consider giving a thumbs up and subscribing maybe turn the notification bell on so you will be notified when another video in this series comes up thanks for watching we'll see you in the next one